Welcome to this Frequency Matters, the R from Microwave update. I'm Pat Hindle, and today I'm talking with Joe Zavoda, Joint Manager of Quantic Wenzel. Welcome, Joe. Hey, thanks for having me. So we're going to discuss frequency control trends and ultra-low phase noise solutions as Quantic Wenzel is a world leader in low phase noise oscillators and related products. So let's start off with uh, what are the common frequency control applications? I think uh, one thing that we may not all recognize is that nearly every electronic system today has some sort of a timing control involved. So anything like your cell phone, the Wi-Fi system, your house, test equipment, uh, radar systems, they all have some sort of a timing device inside of them. And many of the leading edge applications require something that has a ton of precision. So when we here at Quantic Wenzel, we think of frequency control, we're really thinking about those leading edge precise timing applications. And those require a really sophisticated, ultra low phase noise, uh, high performance um, frequency source that actually provides all of that timing for the solution. Uh, some of the things that we see a lot today are quantum computing, 5G millimeter wave applications, air and defense radar, electronic warfare, satellite communications. Those all today require a, a very specific level of precision. Um, and that's really where a lot of what we do winds up, you know, providing uh, a precision frequency source. Yeah, you really play in the uh, high performance market. So what are some of the main types of oscillators and which ones would somebody select for a certain application? Yeah, good question. So the, the, the technologies that you find today, they, they vary widely, but a lot of the core couple of themes really haven't changed much in about 50 years. And so, Oscillators as a fundamental technology, you have crystals, you have surface acoustic waves, which you saw, you have dialectic resonant oscillators, DROs, you have rubidiums, and then you've got MEMS, micro electromechanical systems um, that use, you know, very variations of, of these technologies. And so those core technologies then have some other sort of a control reference. For them and it's phenomenal that these things exist and they actually work given how complicated they are uh, but crystals you know they might have an oven control so there's actually a heater that you build into the circuitry to make it really precise uh, they might have a temperature compensated where you're using different electronic methods to measure the temperature and provide feedback and then you also have voltage control where you provide different voltages and then there are a number of other variants of those sometimes combinations and so all of those things can be combined in a ton of different ways. And so it's really about trying to understand your project's top priorities. So if it's all about cost, well, they're actually really basic RLC circuits that come from the textbooks that many engineers had in college to make the lowest cost uh, oscillator in the world um, off of a basic RLC circuit. Uh, what we see, you know, where, where Wenzel has really, you know, got built our history, it's, it's where phase noise matters. And the two technologies that we probably see more than any other there are OCXO and DRO, so oven controlled crystal oscillators and dielectric resonant oscillators. Uh, they're pretty common choices. And then where long term stability matters, which means it stays very stable for, you know, years and the frequency doesn't change much, rubidiums, that's really the go to for those technologies. Um, and it's really cool to see, you know, some cases where all these things kind of come together, where in today's world, everything is much more complicated than obviously it was 50 years ago. And what happens is we wind up combining some of these technologies, combining them. Um, and so at Wenzel, we'll do stuff anywhere from 10 megahertz to 50 gigahertz, and we'll use multiple technologies. Uh, and we actually have a QRB sync is what we call it. It's been on our website for a while. Uh, it's been a good fit for aircraft systems uh, because they want the best of both worlds. So what we do is we actually take our OCXO technology and we take a rubidium from one of our suppliers. We combine them, figure out how to get them all locked together correctly, and then it provides the best of both worlds. So you get good phase noise out of the OCXO and you get good long-term stability out of the rubidium. Um, of course, a premium you know product there for, for the marketplace. So what are the most important performance factors that you should consider when you're selecting frequency control solutions like crystal oscillators? Yeah, so we, so I mentioned a little bit about um, kind of long-term stability. 
phase noise, of course, is a huge one. So the phase noise that really determines how much the, the, the phase and the frequency are going to fluctuate uh, on a uh, microscopic and a, um, a very short time duration. You know, we're talking about um, picoseconds, right? How fast something's going to fluctuate. Um, and that'll, that'll actually have a downstream impact on how accurate your signal is. You know, how accurate it is a radar system trying to detect something 30 miles away, you know, or so on. Uh, frequency accuracy, you know, when you say something's going to be an actual frequency, how close it actually gets to that and what the deviation is. Uh, aging rate is something that we get asked about a lot. So that's how much it's going to change over time. Everything gets older. Of course, we all do, uh, as do crystals and, and every other technology on the marketplace. Um, and so that's normally something that's specified how much it's allowed to age and degrade over time. And then a very unique one is G sensitivity. And so what's, what's cool about looking at G sensitivity is that uh, a lot of these technologies, you know, rubidium, um, crystal oscillators, they have some sort of a physical uh, makeup at their core. And crystal oscillators, they're, they're oftentimes made off of quartz. Uh, some are made off of sapphire. But what's actually happening is on a microscopic level, there's some sort of internal vibration that's happening. And so when you take something that's generating a frequency that's vibrating on a microscopic level and you put it into a jet next to a jet engine that is also obviously vibrating, it, it degrades the performance and, and causes all kinds of issues because of the acceleration that's getting applied to the device. And so G sensitivity is a measure of how much that acceleration force is going to cause a disruption in the actual signal. And that's one of the things that we've spent a lot of time, you know, really trying to figure out how do you make the best performance while something is in a G-sensitive application or there's going to be a lot of vibration because of the environment that it's in. Yeah, I've read some articles on that you guys contributed on that subject. It's a very complicated uh, physical and electrical problem. So over the last few years, uh, what do you consider your company's most significant technological achievement? So um, Wenzel started in 1978, and recently we became quite part of the Quantic family. Uh, but in 1978, uh, Charlie and Liz, you know, they founded the company together, and they really started building some of the best, uh, quietly the best uh, uh, oscillators in the world. It means of the lowest noise, lowest phase noise. And so that really drove us into a spot where our customer base was really driving demand for really challenging environments, mission critical applications such as fixed wing, rotary wing aircraft, uh, rockets, uh, satellite systems, and so on. And so over the years have been many different uh, leaps that we've taken in order to kind of take the technology and get it to the next level. And most recently, it was actually last year at IMS, and we worked with Microwave Giant Journal on some, some announcements. Uh, we actually released a SOSA line VPX frequency source. Now, we've made a number of VPX sources over the years, but this one is really a critical uh, kind of combination of all of our best technology coming together. And so, one, we made it SOSA aligned, open VPX, something that's compliant to all the standards out there so that we can easily make small modifications for any customer project to make sure it's going to fit. But the other thing we did is we took our best lowest phase noise crystals and we put them into a real-time active vibration compensation, excuse me, compensation system. And so we have a number of algorithms, signal processing, analog technology that helps to compensate for the vibration and to give you the best phase noise under vibration. And so in the end, what you have is a VPX frequency source with the best phase noise under vibration in the world that can output anything from 10 megahertz up to 20 gigahertz all in this one product. And we feel like that's a really good fit for the market. It's all something that, also something that we've seen, you know, air, land, sea customers doing anything from communication to radar to, to EW and other applications, you know, looking for those sorts of things. And we're really excited about it because we really think that it's, it's about the best thing that you can find in the world um, as a frequency source. Yeah, it's a very impressive product, and going into a standard like that has been the trend. So uh, there are many technologies that are driving RF and microwave today. Uh, which ones do you feel are most important as it concerns your company's work? So I think with the, the aerospace defense um, market is one that is a big part of what we do. 
It's a big part of the market that we, we serve. And what you're seeing is massive shifts in uh, updating the way that uh, the battlefield is um, responded to, how, how quickly uh, decisions can be made, uh, the use of ultrasonic weapons, cognitive defense systems, uh, and these all are kind of pushing the limits of what's possible. And with those, our technology plays a critical role. Um, because we're at the heart of many of those systems, we might be at the heart of a, a defense system or at the heart of a radar system or the heart of a communication system to making sure that information is relayed from one location to the other, because that's oftentimes where we, we might find some of our technology, that piece of equipment really determines how accurate and how high performance the entire system will be. So everything casks out from that central location. We normally call that a master reference oscillator or a master frequency source. And because of that, I think we're, we're very proud of a lot of the things that we do. Um, we also notice that, you know, when we, we see some of the things that we see in the world today, that those are also gonna push our customers to demand, you know, the next generation after our VPX is released and, and being used in systems, you know, uh, there'll be the request for the next generation and we've got to figure out how we're going to push it beyond even where it is today. Yeah, I consider the oscillator kind of the heart of the systems. So uh, Quantic Wenzel is one of the uh, companies underneath Quantic Electronics, that family of brands. What can you tell us about your extended ecosystem and any recent news? Yeah, so Quantic overall um, really built uh, sort of a conglomeration of mission critical electronics. And so what that really means is uh, they really wanted to take um, really a, a, a number of companies with a culture of delivering uh, some of the best technology on earth for mission critical situations, specifically components and modules, and really take those great companies, uh, take the best practices between them, take their great reputations, unique high performance products, and really uh, expand uh, the reach of each one of our great companies. Quantic Wenzel being one of them, um, but there are, are 14 others. And in that group of companies, we also work together collaboratively on the engineering front, um, on uh, customer service fronts, on really trying to understand what we're all doing to best serve the market and how we can each help each other to really you know, help our customers. Um, we do a lot of engineer to engineer collaboration and engineer to engineer collaboration with our customers, but also with other quantic companies. Uh, we actually have a number of projects that we at Wenzel are currently working on where we're leveraging uh, some of the technology from other companies in the quantic ecosystem, uh, planar monolithics, X microwave, uh, Cori, TRM, uh, and there's really a great, uh, great marriage of all these companies coming together. Uh, there's also a number of magnetics, passive sensor companies, kind of along with some of these RF and microwave companies. I think we're really excited about seeing, you know, when we're in that situation, we have the ability to, to both contribute, but also to listen and learn and see what, you know, might be coming in uh, to the other companies even, uh, and see where, where they look at us and they say, hey, uh, we've got a great project to work on the next generation platform. Can you help us make the best uh, master reference oscillator that's going to feed the rest of the system. Um, and that's really kind of where we are today is I think we have a lot of great projects in the pipeline. Uh, I think we'll see the Quantic team grow. Uh, and I think we'll continue to see the name, you know, really continue to make a, an impact on the industry. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for talking with me today about frequency control and the trends in the marketplace. We really appreciate your insights. For our audience, you can find more videos at videos.microwavejournal.com. Thanks for watching.